from my district to my country. Uh, but before I go, I want to express uh, what an honor has been to uh, serve with all of you. Uh, the People's House is, in my view, uh, the great embodiment, embodiment of the American dream. Everybody here comes from somewhere, and everybody here is on some mission. You know, I come from a part of the world where we're used to working. As far back as I can remember, I was working. My staff was asking me the other day, well, you know, on November 1st, you're not going to have a job. When was the last time you didn't have a job? And I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. I thought, well, I had to be eight or nine years old because I was throwing newspapers uh, back then and working in my dad's bar. As a matter of fact, uh, I used to work from 5 a.m. on Saturday morning until 2 p.m. for $2. Not $2 an hour, $2. Uh, I never thought uh, about uh, growing up as the easy way or the hard way. It was just the Cincinnati way. And you know, our, our city uh, takes its name from a great Roman general, Cincinnati. A farmer who answered the call of his nation to lead. And then surrendered his power to go back to his plow. Uh, for me, it wasn't a farm, it was a small business. And it wasn't so much a calling as it was a mission. A mission uh, to strive for a smaller, less costly, and more accountable federal government here in Washington. How did we do? Here's some facts. Uh, for the first time in nearly 20 years, we've made some real entitlement reforms, uh, saving uh, trillions of dollars over the long term. We've protected 99% of the American people from an increase in their taxes. We're on track to save taxpayers $2.1 trillion over the next 10 years, the most significant spending reductions in modern times. We banned earmarks altogether. Sorry. We've protected this institution. We've made it more open to the people. And every day in this capital city, there are hundreds of kids from the toughest neighborhoods who are finally get a ch getting a chance at a decent education. I'm proud of these things. But the mission is not complete, but, but the truth is, it may never be. Uh, one thing I came to realize uh, over the years that I've been here is that this battle over the size and scope and cost of our government in Washington has been going on for more than 200 years. And the forces of the status quo do an awful lot, go through an awful lot of trouble to prevent change from happening. Real change takes time. Yes, freedom makes the, all things possible, but patience is what makes all things real. So believe in the long, slow struggle. Believe in this country's ability to meet our challenges and to lead the world. And remember, you can't do a big job alone, especially this one. So I'm grateful to my family. Deb and my two girls, my two girls were three and one when I first ran for office. Now they're a lot older. And uh, so they've been through a lot. Uh, you all know what your families go through. It's one thing for us uh, to, to take the the bricks and the boards and everything gets thrown at us, but it's another thing for our families. Their thin skin isn't as thick as ours. I'm also grateful to all of my colleagues, my fellow leaders, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Scalise, Ms. McMorris Rogers, uh, and, and many on my side of the aisle, our committee chairs, people I've worked with uh, for a long time. But I'm just as grateful to Ms. Pelosi, Mr. Hoyer, Mr. Clyburn, and Becerra, and others uh, for uh, all of the uh, the work that we've done together. Now, over these last five years, we've done an awful lot of work together, probably more work done across the aisle over the last five years than in the 25 years that I've served in this institution. Now, as much as I enjoy working with all of you, some of you still could learn to dress better. <laughs> you know who you are. And I saw one of the uh, one of the culprits, one of the usual suspects that uh, shows up here once in a while without a tie. Uh, but this morning he didn't wasn't dressed very well, but he did have a tie on. 
Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to the people who work in this institution every day, and whether it's uh, the reading clerks. Or people, thousands of people, uh, that uh, allow us to do our jobs and to help make this institution what it is. And whether it's the people you see here today or the people in the, the CAO's office or the Capitol Police or uh, Ledge Council, there really are thousands of people uh, that really do allow us to do our job. I'm grateful uh, to my staff. Now, you all know I'm a big believer in staff. Uh, none of us can be what we are without a good staff. And I certainly would never have gotten to this job uh, without uh, having built a great team. And so I am, really am grateful to my staff, as uh, they like to say to each other, uh, once you're part of Bainerland, you're always part of Bainerland. And uh, that certainly goes for me as well. I'm especially grateful to uh, all my constituents and uh, volunteers over the years. Uh, that includes a student at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, uh, in 1990, uh, he was putting up campaign signs for me. His name was Paul Ryan. I don't, I didn't think he could pronounce my name back in 1990. He was putting yard signs up for me, but as Cincinnati has understood, there's a difference between being asked to do something and being called to do something. Now, Paul is being called. I'll, I know he'll serve with grace and with energy. And I want to wish him and his family all the best. <laughs> my colleagues, I've described my life as a chase for the American dream. That chase began at the bottom of the hill just off the main drag in Redding, Ohio, right outside of Cincinnati. Top of the hill was a small house with a big family, a shining city in its own right. The hill had twists, the hill had turns, and even a few tears. Nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you, it was just perfect. Never forget, we're the luckiest people on the earth. In America, you can do anything that you're willing uh, to work for, willing to work hard at, and things, uh, anything can happen if you're willing to make the necessary sacrifices in life. If you falter, uh, and you will, uh, you can just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go do it again. Because hope always springs eternal. And if you just do the right things for the right reasons, good things will happen. And this, too, can really happen to you. God bless you, and God bless our great country.